Meet the scientist George Pilate, 1912 to 2008. Cells contain several kinds of organelles. Or organelle is any number of organized or specialized structure inside a living cell. Ribosomes are among the most crucial organelles in cells. Here we tell the story of how ribosomes were discovered. Organelles are important to you. For instance, from time to time you will get sick. We usually blame sickness on some problem with our organs. Examples include lungs when we get the flu, or muscle when we have a bruise, or skin when we get sunburned. All diseases begin with damage to one or more organelles within cells. The organelles allow cells to run smoothly when we are well. Well now, you might ask, why should I care about how an organelle was discovered? First, the discoveries of the various organelles tell a story about how scientists make discoveries. The story typically tells about how gaps in existing knowledge lead to new questions that motivate the scientists to develop a plan for testing. Before we begin, Dr. Pilate's story, it helps to see how centuries of work on other organelles came from before Pilate. It all began with Robert Hooke, who invented a microscope that he used to magnify objects enough so that the cells become visible. He worked with cork, which is actually dead tissue from the cork tree. What he saw were empty circles that he named cells because they reminded him of a prison cell that holds prisoners. But that raised a question that Hooke could not answer. What did these cells contain when the plant was alive? Over the years, many other people with better equipment and ideas found the answers. To provide a little historical perspective, here is a list of major organelles and when they were discovered. 1665, cell membrane. 1676, vacuoles. 1833, nucleus. 1842, chromosomes. 1857, mitochondria. 1903, cytoskeleton, 1945, endoplasmic reticulum, 1949, lysosomes, 1953, microtubules, 1955, ribosomes. George Pilate is considered by many to be the father of modern cell biology. He developed a unique way to separate the various organelles in cells. His method was valuable because it allowed organelles of a cell to be separated from from each other with little damage. As a result, it was possible to learn the normal function of organelles. Dr. Pilate also discovered ribosomes and their function and provided us with new information about other cell organelles. Because he could purify ribosomes without damage, he was able to discover their function in protein synthesis. This, in turn, helped other researchers find treatments for such diseases as cancer, anemia, bone marrow failure, and various genetic diseases. George Pilate was born in 1912 in Jassy, the old capital of Moldovia, Romania. His father was a philosopher professor and his mother was a teacher. In 1930, he started medical school in Romania at the University of Bucharest. During medical school, he discovered that he was more interested in basic science than in medicine. After medical school, he started work on a PhD pro degree studying dolphin kidneys. He was trying to understand how the kidneys of marine mammals, such as dolphins, are able to get rid of all the salt that is found in seawater. Little did he know that he was about to become a pioneer in cell biology. During World War II, he served in the medical corps of the Romanian army. After the war, he came to the United States to continue his studies. In 1952, he became a citizen of the United States. While working for a few months in the biology laboratory of Robert Chambers at New York University, Pilate met Dr. Albert Claude, who was giving a seminar on his work with electromicroscopy. This technology magnified organelles enough to be seen. That stimulated Dr. Pilate's interest in organelles. After the seminar, he chatted with Claude and somehow managed on the spot to get invited to work in Claude's lab at the Rockefeller Institute for Medical Research. During the 1950s, Dr. Pallad discovered ribosomes and their function. He also defined the fine structure of mitochondria. Figure 1 on the left, 
One of the original EM pictures of ribosomes from a thin slice of rat pancreas. Ribosomes appear as little black dots. On the right, electron micrograph in the vicinity of the nucleus in the same cell. Magnification equals 73,000. Dr. Pilate was interested in more than just the structure of cell organelles. He also wanted to know their function. Dr. Pilate needed a source of tissue that would provide living cells that he could study. He chose the guinea pig. He also needed a tissue that was always busy making secretions. For that, he chose the pancreas. The pancreas is very busy making gland secretions. Pilate spent special efforts studying ribosomes because they contained a mixture of RNA, ribonucleic acid, and the proteins that they make. At that time, the usual method to study the parts of the cell involved homogenesis. This process breaks open the cells to release their contents. Spinning, or centrifuging, tissue samples at high speeds separates the organelles according to their density. The heavier particles are thrown towards the bottom of the test tube, while the lighter weight particles form the upper layers. This process tore the organelles and the resulting factions were not very pure. Dr. Pilate wanted to isolate cell organelles without damaging them so that he could analyze their biochemistry. He and two colleagues in Claude's lab modified the usual method of separating cell components by centrifuging homogenates in a sucrose medium. Scientists still use this method to extract specific molecules from plant or animal tissue. The fractionization occurs in a tube prepared by layering progressively less dense sucrose solutions one upon another without mixing. For example, the first layer of higher concentration is placed carefully in the bottom of a centrifuge tube. Then, in succession, layers of decreasing concentration are added carefully without mixing. Then, cell homogenate is placed on top and centrifuged at very high speeds. Each cellular component begins to move down through the gradient and eventually reaches a position where the density of the organelles equals the density of the sucrose layer. Dr. Pilate continued the study the function of organelles including the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi complex, the secretory granules, and the cell membrane. His love of Roman history and Latin, which is the basis of many words used in biology, were useful in helping him name many of the cell structures he identified. Dr. Pilate had a very long career and became dean at the University of California at San Diego School of Medicine.